back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thank you for tuning in, watching, or listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. You survived pre-releasing. Well done, guys. Great job. You We're made proud it through. Of you. Staying up till 5 a.m. <laughs> Look at you guys. Look Good your, on you. Your, it's your little card sleepover game. That's cute. Guys, as always, these episodes are brought to you by our good friends over at Cardsphere.com, the best mm. place to buy, sell, and trade Magic cards <laughs> online. You can get buy list pricing there. Uh, definitely check it out. Mm. We also need to mention at the top of this episode, uh, not only are the Kraken Packs going to be sponsored by Grand Slam this episode, but this oh, entire yes. episode is sponsored by our good friends over at Grand Slam. 100%. By Grand Slam and in <laughs> spirit by Cards Fear. <laughs> they sponsor the whole, the podcast as a yeah. whole, but this one specifically, thank you to Grand Slam, uh, hooking us up with some guilds, uh, letting us get our nerdy little hands on them. Yes, we really do cool. appreciate it. Uh, if you are in the South Carolina, North Carolina area, we highly suggest checking them out and join their Facebook group. The link is in the description. Yes. Uh, definitely, definitely Come do out. that. We oh. play on Saturdays, so yeah. you can still go, to your, still go to your home store and hit us up on Saturdays. Yep. Us out. 5 p.m. every Saturday. Come cool. hang out. Cool, cool. Uh, we also have to mention our giveaway winner oh. uh, for our Guilds of Ravnica giveaway. <laughs> I'm going to drum roll you in. Are you ready? Uh, is it written down somewhere? Yeah, it's right here. Oh, thank right. God. <laughs> Edvard Ribeiro. <laughs> Congratulations to you. I probably didn't say your name right, and for that I'm sorry. Yeah. But I am also thankful that I had the opportunity to butcher your name. Thank you for entering <laughs> and uh, <laughs> participating. What a great way to say that. We really appreciate all the support. This was a record for us in terms of the giveaway. We had yes. so many of you come out. Uh, don't thank forget... You all. We do these like every month, yeah. so just come hang out, do yeah. fun stuff, go ahead and subscribe. Be around and get it done cards early. thrown at you at some point. That's the idea. Uh, Not too hard, though. They can cut you. <laughs> As we have found out. Uh, all right, random car of the daytime. Let's actually start the episode. Right, Three, two, go. one. Impeccable timing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It uh, is an instant for one and a white. This is from Amonkhet, mm -hmm, uh, as, mm -hmm. as well as Kaladesh. Uh, it right. deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. And my opinion of this is that it is a decent removal spell and limited. Agreed. White gets a lot of these tricks, um, or at least have recently. Um, they have recently, haven't they? Yeah, I think I think they've become more relevant yeah. um, in the kind of modern <laughs> era for magic. You didn't see a bunch of this stuff early but that's fine yeah um so yeah this is i mean white removal this is the style you're gonna find if it's not in a pacifism effect um and it you're exactly right kev it's decent removal in white yes yeah. it's, it's good for limited there is absolutely nothing wrong with it i would yep. not play it anywhere other than limited Agreed. uh just to go ahead and throw that out there but yeah, yeah in limited this is prime removal for white mm -hmm. perfectly fine yeah uh and it's good a common stuff. which is pretty good yeah good stuff. um Okay, like so, Will, what are we talking about today? Today, Kev, you may or may not have heard, um, well, we're going back to Ravnica. We've been Wait, back when? for about a week. Look that around. Don't actually look around, you fool. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, God. I didn't see it. But we're, we are, we're in Ravnica now, officially. It's in standard. Amok has rotated out. That crater of a plane is gone. Um, but here we are. So, what we did over the pre-release weekend uh, is we got hooked up with some this one's not open but we got hooked up with a box of guilds we cracked it open we put together some decks and we played it Yep. Uh, and we're going to talk about what we think is in terms of a limited sense in terms of card effects specific cards Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and yeah. I want to point out, so we haven't done this for a while, but it mm -hmm. used to be sort of our norm that when a new set would come out, we'd split a box mm -hmm. and do sort of our own version of Sealed where we kind of got to play with the best possible scenario for whatever deck we wanted to play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, again, given half a box, you're going to be able to deal some sort of awesome deck together, and it's going to be awesome. So yeah. uh, we did that first, but we also took it one step further with this, and we actually built... A deck using one box, just the singular singular box. Mm -hmm. We split up the cards and made guild decks for each guild, yeah. just to see how things would kind of play out. Again, obviously this is best case scenario. A lot of these cards right. you wouldn't get a perfect scenario in a draft setting by any means, sure, or even sure, a sealed sure. pool. But uh, we just wanted to see really how these would play out and how this would work and how mm -hmm. each guild sort of interacts with each other. Yeah, the thought is really to to play with the. Um, 
new keyword effects as much as we can. Really yep. just get them, uh, get a lot of experience under our feet. So we play with all of them. Yeah. Um, Pretty and extensively. Let's, I think you you touched on something important. Let's go through the new mechanics that we're seeing in each of these guilds sure. and talk about them sort of step by step. Which ones do we think were really, really powerful for limited, which maybe mm-hmm. weren't quite as good. Uh, I'm going to mm-hmm. go ahead and start and say uh, Jumpstart. Yeah. The deck that you played was insane. Jumpstart <laughs> is really fun. Uh, yeah. Anytime you get to cast a spell again uh, is always great i mean snapcaster remains a staple card in in modern because you get to do that with any instant or sorcery uh flashback when it was in standard was a premium effect any card with flashback was considered (laughs) uh potentially constructed viable yeah um and i I say that with pretty high confidence i can't think of a card with flashback that wasn't in a standard deck at some point yeah um Someone's tits to me, but um, <laughs> yes. So Jumpstart is great. Jumpstart uh, is on tons of blue red cards that you ju- you just love it to be on. It, it, it takes uh, like okay limited cards like tap a creature, deal two damage to its controller. Mm-hmm. It's okay, but if I can do that twice, I mean that saves me two turns from a yeah. scary guy. It's two draws potentially more depending on more cards. Well, and what we found, to too, stuff. is that you can chain the jump starts. So you mm-hmm. discard a card with jump start to the first jump start trigger, and then you have another one ready to go. And so, yeah. like, obviously it's not great. Like, you'd want to get the two the two plays out of that singular card. But sure. in a pinch, like, you have a second use out of everything mm-hmm. that you're pitching. So it's, yeah. like, not... It doesn't feel as bad as I initially thought it would Definitely. when you're ditching cards. You know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, there were plenty of times where I could have pitched, like... I can pitch this creature, or oh, duh, this card has jumpstart. I don't lose it technically. I'll yeah. just throw it away. It just makes and it yeah, so much better. Definitely. Um, I want to move to surveil very quickly because, um, and I don't know exactly where you're at with it. I found it to be very, very rewarding. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought this would not be that great. Okay. And I was pleasantly surprised. I don't think it's the best mechanic for limited. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you and I do agree on that end. Right. But I do think it makes. It just sort of like takes the worry away from from so many options that you can yeah. be. So the first thing that we ran into, uh, one of the games that we played, I had like four or five lands in hand and then like two very relevant spells. And so I was like, okay, well, I need to keep these spells. I don't really want to mulligan. I'll just try it. I'll see what happens. It was a bad keep. You should never do that, by the way. <laughs> um, I think four lands and a control is okay, but... But five is a bit high. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but what I found is when you have all these surveil triggers, it's kind of okay to, it's, I'm not advising it, but you can kind of get away with it. Uh, sure. Because if you find a land on top with a surveil trigger, you just ditch it. And then ideally you're digging to relevant spells right. all the time. And so like you kind of get rewarded in some instances for pulling really janky things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I will also say, too, that what I really liked about it is in Limited, specifically, when you're playing sort of a control-style deck, a lot of times you're just digging and digging for whatever answer you need at that particular time, and sometimes that's easy to do, sometimes it's really difficult to do. Surveil makes it easy, Mm -hmm. because you can get whatever cards you don't need out of the way. Uh, And there are so many relevant Surveil cards for Limited. Yeah, that's the other thing for me is... uh, Surveil as an effect is decent for limited. Yeah. What makes it great is just the cards that it's printed on. It's insane. Artful takedown comes to mind. It's great, right? It does yeah. so it, two things you really want it to do, and then it also surveils. Yeah, like they could have easily print- wait. Artful takedown doesn't surveil. Is it not surveil too? No, it doesn't surveil. You're thinking, thinking uh, price of fame and oh, the that's five right. drop removal spell. That's right. Which I can't think of the name of the five drop removal spell. But yes, both of the like prime removal yeah. spells in black. Uh, just they surveil too. <laughs> it's right. like, cool. I mean, yeah. why not? <laughs> My point was, you'll find removal in other black removal in other sets that's yeah. priced the same CMC that doesn't have any upside other than destroying a creature. Yeah. But in this set, oh, by the way, you also get to look through your deck. Cool. Yeah. It's like, like it just moves everything out. Yeah. Um, it's very very easy to take over a game mm-hmm. with surveil. I will say. Agreed. Um, yeah. and I really enjoyed that. Um, convoke. Where do we land on Convoke? Convoke, I mean, it's it's in the same home it's always been in. Convoke is solid, but it will always depend on if you find a big bomb with Convoke. Yeah. So uh, you are really, if you draft for Convoke, you're really focused on yeah. convoking stuff. Like you're, 
you don't get as many fun tricks. You obviously need to get removal. You obviously need to get a few pump spells because green, mm -hmm. you know, that's how they work. Um, but you always have to be on the lookout for a big hexproof convoke guy, a big five five convoke dude. Um, the uh, seven five convoke and hexproof mm -hmm. is like the best limited bomb. <laughs> I feel like that thing it's, is insane. It's it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good. It may uh, not be the best, but in green it is solid. Yeah. Um, yeah. I convoke was a little bit underwhelming. Granted, um, I don't I don't know. It it I like convoke as a mechanic no too. matter what i, I think it's a very solid way to get a lot bigger bodies onto the field as quickly as possible yeah and it does that certainly but as you said it's so reliant on the payoff cards mm -hmm. that sometimes it just doesn't get there um, yeah that's the thing and that's my worry with it you can i mean you will have a bunch of little guys and you should if it's convoke yeah. deck so pulling a few of those when you really need something to pay off you know it's not um I, that, that never feels good. Yeah. Uh, if they, if your opponent's stocked up on removal and, you know, you've just tapped everything out to convoke a big guy out and they just kill it, you're left in a, with an open board. Yeah. So, convoke and limited, it can pay off. Um, in terms of like a core mechanic for a deck, I'm a little bit, a little bit hesitant on it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I mean, it can work. Sure. Right. You get Amara out. Woo, that's sweet. Yeah. Um, you get the um, uh, green, white X. It's not camaraderie. It's the... Uh, the big Colossus thing? No, I'm thinking the mythic instant. Oh, oh. Uh, you just make a bunch of dudes. You go wide. Super wide. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Continue yeah. talking. Um, but cards <laughs> like that make Invoke obviously extremely worth it, but, you know, you're not... What, what I like to see with Convoke is you put it in other things, like you draft red, white. Yeah. And have some Convoke. Um, there's a Loxodon Restore. Yeah, yeah. March of the Multitudes. That's it. There we go. Um, Loxodon, I think it's Loxodon Restore. Sorry. Gains um, for life? Yeah. Yep. I think it's Restore. I if it's so. Restore, I will high five myself and it's going to be super freaking awkward. Uh, but it comes in Gains for Life. It is. Uh, this, honestly, this is a card that has <laughs> potential for a constructed play as well. Do you think so? I do. Um, this. And it doesn't look like it on the onset. No, it really doesn't. That's why I'm saying that. <laughs> in a in your tokens deck, in a convoke constructed deck, yeah, yeah. Uh, you will play him for two a lot of the time, or even three. Mm -hmm. And a three four for three is really solid. A three four for three that gains you four life is great. Sure. Um, you obviously don't build a ton for life gain, but that's just incidental that's, against that's really Agro. nice value. He got a big butt, so. Uh, <laughs> That's a really decent <laughs> card in a creature-centric deck. Um, there was someone on a, another show talking about that card and how much they liked it. Uh, they swayed me. Um, <laughs> but then this one as well, obviously, Venerated Loxodon is... It's a rare, but it is crisp it's in great. Convoke. It's very great. Yeah. Uh, it's 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, with Convoke. If it comes in, anyone that Convoked it gets a counter. Uh, your two twos with lifelink, or your one ones with lifelink, I mean, are now two twos. Yep. Or vigilance, or whatever. <laughs> um, I like it a lot. I can see potentially there being some crossover between a Boros and putting cards like this in a slower mm. Boros deck, depending on how the meta shakes out, especially with Venerated Loxodon. I think that's a really solid play if you have a yeah. bunch of tokens mm -hmm. in a Boros deck. Um, so, yeah, uh, final summation Convoke. Well yeah yeah oh go sorry ahead. no no go ahead my final summation is convoke is dece but i like it as kind of a uh just a bonus effect not as like a center for my deck if i sense. think i would agree with you on that i think like building around convoke is like not setting yourself up for like a letdown by any means because you can certainly get some awesome stuff but yeah. it's like it's more of just like, oh, this card has Convoke. Well, it'll be way easier to cast. It's right. like you take a five drop like the Loxodon here, mm -hmm. and you drop it down one or two on mm -hmm. average because you'll hopefully be able to to play it for a little bit less. And it's right. like, that's just good. That's always good. Yeah. But like not necessarily as the central kind of theme. Right. I would agree with that. Sure. Uh, the last new mechanic that we have no, is... There's two. There's two more we haven't talked about. Oh, crap, you're right. Uh, the last one that I want to talk about uh, is Undergrowth. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, really like Undergrowth as a mechanic. I think it's quite solid. There's an inherent problem that I feel like Undergrowth has Okay. Uh, in a 40-card deck. 
-hmm. which is if you're discarding a bunch of stuff, which a lot of the green black stuff does, yep. you inherently don't have cards left. <laughs> and that True. is kind of a problem. True. Uh, that being said, there are some very, very good payoff cards uh, for the undergrowth mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, even Necrotic Wound, which is just a removal spell, is insane. Uh, yes. Hatchery Spider is an absolute all-star. I love this card, uh, specifically in Limited. You just get free stuff with it. It's insane. Uh, a card that does not have uh, Undergrowth, but does sort of fuel it quite well, Charnel Troll. Uh, yeah. This is already on a lot of people's radar because it's just a 3-drop 4-4 four four <laughs> with yeah, Trample. That's, that's uh, nice. <laughs> with Upside, uh, yes, you do have to exile cards from your graveyard, which kind of mm -hmm. sucks, but you also get to discard cards to your graveyard right. with its own mechanic. I mean, and it just gets bigger. Like, that. that's insane. Yeah, uh, it's Very, excellent. very strong card. It's excellent. Uh, a card I would have really liked to synergize with is the Underrealm Lich, but we didn't pull it, of course. Uh, unfortunately. It's, yeah. But it just seems great. There there are a lot of really good payoff cards, though, for this. Uh, there's one that's a four drop. Oh, yeah, the Lurcher. I love this card in uh, an Undergrowth deck. It's just a giant beater. It's oftentimes way bigger than a 4-4, four four, which if you play it on four right. is like kind of okay anyway definitely, uh definitely. and i unfortunately didn't get to play with it but i've test drafted i've also watched a large number of drafts where mm -hmm. they play this and it's very easily a six six or a seven seven i saw it up to like a nine nine for yeah. four mana like i mean the later your game goes in, yeah. in black green the bigger that guy gets and the thing about That's it great. is there are a couple cards that really help you get to the late game obviously all the removal but there's actually this card so crawl for foragers excuse me is an interesting card. I did not like this card at first glance, but okay. there's so much incidental life gain to be had off of this card. It, it gains a life for every creature card in your graveyard, and it's also a 4-4 body on a 5-5, five five, which isn't, or excuse me, on a 5-costed card. Not great stats, but it does match up pretty well against all these aggro decks. Definitely. And it gains you life, so it's just like, it takes an aggro deck if it's like so close to killing you, and then you play this, and it's just like, no, no, you don't get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, Okay, yeah, so like, yeah. I'm not recommending you play like tons of these in a deck, but one is perfectly fine, maybe even two in certain instances, depending sure. on what you're against. Sure. Uh, so I, I did really, really enjoy uh, Undergrowth. As a mechanic, mm -hmm. I think it's very, very strong for limited. For yeah, sure. I mean, you said everything I would say. It, I think, is very good for limited. I think it's going to be good for constructed, given Agreed. time. Um, yeah, I, I really like Undergrowth. Uh, you are kind of forced into a lot of creature slots. Um, and yeah. this is one instance of a green deck not really needing like pump stuff. You don't mm -hmm. need combat tricks. If you are if you can, if you can make undergrowth work, you don't need a bunch of pump stuff. Um, one thing you always want to be on the lookout for is death touch creatures. I think if you're going for uh, an undergrowth theme, you are playing to the later to mid game, mid to later. That's and right in that right. case, you're good with one for one in your creatures all the time. Yeah, you want your creatures to die. Eventually, you want them to trade. You want you want some value out of them. So you kind of can value smaller dudes a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, Hired Poisoner, 1-1, yeah. one, one, Death Touch for one. Great card. Excellent. Um, uh, Pitiless Gorgon here, 2-2 two, two for three with Death Touch. Great. Yeah. Cards awesome. like that are perfect. Yeah. And it's super easy to cast. It's hybrid mana. Uh, mm -hmm. That is... In limited, in green black, a card that I think you should. I mean, honestly, any green deck can pick it up. It's great, <laughs> but green black especially yep. uh, wants that. So the last mechanic we'll talk about is mentor. <laughs> um, mentor is, I think, I'm safe in saying this. It's the most. Uh, it's the it's the. God effect that affects the board the most. I think in limited. Uh yeah. Just as soon as it comes in, it's. Uh, your board grows it's something to consider it's something that will uh put pressure on your opponent very easily <laughs> um there are plenty of super pushed little guys in yeah. green in uh in red white in this set um that are it's honestly kind of nuts how good these cheap creatures are boros challenger for instance is a two three for two it's an uncommon uh with mentor with fire breathing for four um <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really strong. Uh, really Goblin good. Banneret, it is an uncommon. Mm -hmm. For one, it's got Mentor, and uh, Goblin Banneret gets plus two, plus seven. So not quite fire breathing, but it's on a, that's a, that's a, a one drop. Uh, Sunholm Stalwart. Yeah, first strike. Mentor for two. 
It's a tutu. <laughs> there are a plethora of cheap mentor options. The yeah. things that th- this set is very aggressive uh, in terms of what's been printed on the cards. Mm-hmm. I think the value of everybody is so strong. Um, you, the deck synergizes so easily with any kind of option you want to go with um, in red white. Even if you want to say you've picked up a few strong mentor pieces and you want to put them in uh, a more green white deck, this is one time when like if you've pulled Tajik, if you've pulled Aurelia, I think it's worth putting him in. Yeah. Um, for a few reasons, diversifies your board so that your tokens that you're going to make eventually they will have to be removed, and no one wants to kill a token with a yeah. removal spell. Uh, putting your opponent in that position is so just mean. <laughs> it's <laughs> gruesome. Um, we have the 2-2 flyer from Return to Ravnica back. Uh, Skyjack Legionnaire or something like that? Wojek something? Sunhold? No. That might be it. Sunhold? No, it's Sky it's something the, uh, Legionnaire. I know what you're talking about. It's Flying in Haste. Yeah, Flying in Haste for three. Um, you put... <laughs> it's a 2-2, two, two, so... Sky Knight. Sky Knight Legionnaire, excuse me. Uh, it's a 2-2. Two, two. So you'll get at least one Mentor trigger. Now you have a 3-3 three, three Flyer on turn three. <laughs> That's insanely good. Um, mentor is very, very pushed, in my yeah. opinion. Just I, based on the, the the card pool. It's great. Yeah, no, I know. And I, I definitely agree with you. Where I find it to be very, very scary is normally like the Boros aggro decks mm-hmm. are really, really good in the first couple turns, like mm-hmm. two, three turns. And then it's like, okay, they stall out. They run out of gas. It's whatever. The creatures get outclassed, which is what oftentimes happens. Sure. Here, the creatures just don't get outclassed as quickly, and yeah. that is scary. <laughs> like, Definitely. I mean, they just they hold their own much more... Th- much. I'm trying to think of the word. Much more strongly. That's a bad way of saying that. Um, much better? Much better. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. Better. <laughs> more uh, better? <laughs> yeah, more better. Uh, they just... They hold their own so, yeah. so well, and it's like... Th- it's just so hard to get over that like outclass them because Mm -hmm. normally that's the best way to handle it is just play better creatures you know what i mean like play things with a little bit more power a little bit more toughness and you're good because what do they do against that right but they build themselves (laughs) like it's not right it's wrong will (laughs) it's wrong (laughs) uh yeah it red white i held this opinion coming into limited i thought red white is was going to be kind of the front runner Mm-hmm. Just based on what the cards were printed as, um, I looked at like the rares. There are really, really classy rares in red white. <laughs> uh, Swiftblade Vindicator is nuts. That's constructed all star. Uh, Light of the Legion, Legion War Boss. These guys rares with Mentor on them that just push Boros kind of over the edge. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, yeah. Now you're not potentially going to see. A really tuned mentor deck if you're drafting it mm. but I think that assuming you get some really you get a few of those core mentor creatures on him stalwart uh, stuff like that you will be able to be aggressive be punchy be really yeah um, have, just make a fruitful deck man make a fruit of the loom deck you make it just great um, <laughs> So yeah, that's those are all the mechanics. That's what we wanted to play with. Yeah, um, that's what we got excited about. Uh, one thing I just want to point out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, before moving on really quickly, so this goes without saying, the guild mages always are flagship cards in any return or any Ravnica set, right? Or return to Ravnica set. Now that we've got more of those than original. <laughs> um, be. But uh, I was really, really impressed, more than I thought I would be, with mm-hmm. all of them except Is It Guild Mage. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, specifically, the House Guild Mage did mm-hmm. some work. Uh, not even for the surveil triggers, though it's right. nice to always have that sort of on deck. Being able mm-hmm. to tap something down on an pers- on a opposing player's upkeep, mm-hmm. and then having it tap down for basically two turns... It's holy crap that's good <laughs> yeah it turns off combat for your yeah. opponent easily we usually see this in white in some way yeah normally um, or some kind of blue like uh frost breath effect mm-hmm. um which i mean this is what that effect is sure uh however having it for two 
I mean, over and over again. Yeah. Oh, baby. It is so good. Like, sure, mama. we kind of expected the Conclave Guild Mage to be good, and it was. Yes. Uh, Legion Guild Mage as well. It just deals damage and taps yeah. creatures. And there's its white. There's, there's the, the white. Yeah. yeah. Granted, it does untap during the next untap step, which is right. where the blue kind of differs. Oh, yeah. And then the Swarm Guild Mage, giving everything menace, is phenomenal. That yep. can just win a game pretty right. quickly. Right, uh, right, right. And then incidental life gain. Lead guild mage, me. <laughs> Honestly, it's very strange, but I mean that kind of just goes to show you that you don't really want to. Card draw isn't awesome um, in limited. Um, I mean, I think it's good. Like you play it right, um, because it is gonna get you card uh, advantage theoretically. I, I didn't play it. I had the option you chose to not and to. Didn't because the red blue limited deck wants to be way more aggressive yeah. than having than spending resources not casting spells to hurt your sure. opponent to remove or burn. That makes sense. Um, I did have cards that would allow me to draw. Mm-hmm. However, um, the synergies with instant and sorceries made it so that I wanted to play yeah. those over a creature that did that. That's fair. Um, I know you get... In to- a regular draft setting, though, if you didn't have access to as many cards as we had access to, oh, would yeah. you? do you think you would... I, I probably would because um, obviously we were playing best case scenarios on all these so there are sure. instances where we would not have the resources we had uh, for sure sure I mean I can I can always see playing this I just yeah, yeah. I just chose uh, a, the, a form of the deck that was very aggressive centered around casting a spell every turn and then swinging yeah. in and that was kind of the goal um, was to win quickly so mm-hmm. I would only have mana to cast like one burn spell but the two creatures I have on board, uh, they deal damage based on my my sorceries. You know, you yeah. have the uh, we dragonauts, you yeah, have the crackling drakes, yeah, you got the piss and fist. That dude's insane. Yeah, something. Okay, I want to answer a question right now, and I'll pose it to you as well. Okay, the scariest of the five guilds in limited. Mine is is it? That thing is yeah. scary as crap. <laughs> like, I mean, so, uh, it can come out of nowhere and deal. 12 damage a turn yeah one combat phase it's insane yeah it's very very good um now my issue with playing a super aggressive is a deck is in a lot of cases they run out of gas quickly yeah here's why um yes you get to cast spells again with jumpstart mm-hmm. yes you can pitch a jumpstart card into the graveyard but at some point you are going down one card you're discarding every time you use jumpstart yeah so eventually you are top decking for a uh, uh, a jumpstart proc, right? Yeah, um, which I mean again is a testament to how quickly this deck is trying to win. Oh sure, as you mentioned, absolutely. Like I think that is the important part is you're trying to win and do it very very quickly. Yeah. It's it's mm-hmm. again I we talked about this in the deck tech episode that I posted uh, with the is it spells deck, but. Mm-hmm. The draft deck is fairly reminiscent of the actual constructed Is It Spells deck, yeah. where it's like, just play some high value creatures that benefit off of all these instants and sorceries, and then run them out like as yes. quick as you can. <laughs> like yeah, that's, that's all you have feels. to do. That's how um, but that was definitely the scariest deck. Uh, the one I felt the most confident in though was Demir. Yeah, Demir's card pool is super good. Oh my gosh! Yes. I think it's got the best flyer in Nightville Predator. <laughs> Uh, a 3-3 three, three for 4 with flying death touch and hexproof. So Hexproof being broken. Evasion, and evasion, and then you really want to block it? <laughs> Do you? Uh, yeah, we talk about if it's got death touch, you should probably draft it. And yeah. this also has flying. And hexproof. God, it's so good. Like, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um, the there is a cycle like, of these, uh, like 2-2, two and 2-red, two, right. two 2-white, two 2-blue, two yeah. you know. And all of them are pretty good, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, the Conclave Cavalier, that's just like really good value all the time, right? I mean, oh, yeah. it's very, very solid. Uh, the True Fire Captain is great, uh, because mm-hmm. it's just going to start nugging people for extra damage, even if it doesn't necessarily get through for a lot of damage. Sure. Uh, Crackling Drake, obviously, we talked about Night Veil Predator, we talked about Golgari Find Broker is like the least impactful. Right, I feel like um, I was actually more excited about this one than a, like a couple of the others initially because it felt like Eternal Witness, um, but it's like a really bad Eternal Witness. <laughs> so like, it's not. It's yeah, yeah. It's not as good as he went. No, obviously, it's definitely um, not, not even close. It's the one that I would feel the least confident about yeah. casting. Yeah, absolutely. Personally. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, 
overall thoughts on this limited format will this limited format is super fun yeah uh, it's the most fun i've had in a long time um we talk up a lot of sets before we play them mm-hmm. because of specific cards because of uh new effects whatever uh but then we get them and it's like ah, well okay <laughs> uh this is really fun to play um, yeah i and that might just be my ravnica bias i don't know but um <laughs> Doesn't it seem like whenever Wizards has, I'm not going to say, like, controversy, but we'll say some friction yeah. from its consumers that, so oh, all we'll the just time. throw Ravnica at them again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yes and no, only because uh, while I agree they are they have done that a lot, um, twice now, um, yeah, uh, it's also mm-hmm. been a we've kind of been in a state of constant friction with wizards for quite a while now. <laughs> I mean, it's it's been pretty. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That um, might be, that's a whole other topic for right, a whole other we'll, thing. I mean, we'll see, right? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, of course. Um, I do want to again thank Grand Slam for providing us with some product to actually play this out with. Thank Normally, you. we don't get to be this thorough. Uh, but with this right. set in particular, we really wanted to sit down, take the time to do it. We spent like two days mm-hmm. just playing Ravnica, yep. <laughs> um, yep. building decks, trying to figure things out. We worked together on some of the deck building as well to make sure that we were mm-hmm. giving each guild sort of the best shot that it could. Fair enough. Uh, and so we, again, really appreciate Grand Slam for providing that yeah, us that awesome. opportunity. Um, moving to the question of the week. Ooh. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward one. Again, yep. focusing on Guilds of Ravnica Limited. What's your favorite draft deck uh, in this current limited environment? Really mm-hmm. interested to know because, again, we have our opinions, but they yep. may be different from yours. Heck yeah. Uh, and your experience might be different from ours. And so we'd love to hear For that. Sure. Uh, For sure. But for the first time, finally, and again, sponsored by Grand Slam Comics <laughs> and Collectibles. <laughs> Link in the description. Uh... We finally get to move away from M19 yep. and into Guilds of Ravnica crack packs I could not be more excited. Doesn't that sound good? I know they sound pack. exactly like any other <laughs> Actually, no. No, you no, have no, to no. pick it. I'm going to pick this one. Um, we, of course... A- ASMR? Sprinkle of salt. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Is that the right? thing? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's we need a super sensitive mic. Um, anyway, guys, we of course have our new gold cards with this. Mm. Will, what's yours? Uh, mine is Knight of Autumn. A solid card. Uh, mine is Narcomoeba. A not solid card. <laughs> it's cute. Uh, Knight of Autumn <laughs> is, I believe, going to be valuable you think in so? the future. Oh, yes. Yeah, it definitely I think is. It's, that card's insane. Yeah. Three, two, one. What? <laughs> no, oh, I got a four. Well, although... Oh, yeah, that's good. Uh, Ritual of Soot? Yeah, Soot. Indeed. Uh, Yeah, dude, mission briefing. (laughs) We needed one of those to play test our deck, actually. (laughs) There will be a new deck tech coming soon, guys. Uh, (laughs) Ooh. So I've got a few options. Uh, Cards that I really like out of this pack. Uh, Deadly Visit, Great Removal on 5, Destroy Target Creature and Surveil 2. Crackling Drake, obviously a card we just talked about, which has so much high upside, uh, as well as City Watch Sphinx, which is one of the best blue, pure blue uncommons, in my opinion. 5-4 uh, flying for 6, mm-hmm. and when it dies, Surveil 2. I think to leave myself a little bit open in the first couple packs, uh, I would probably go City Watch Sphinx over the Crackling Drake. Okay. Um, I that's fair. But honestly, any of those three cards, I would be perfectly happy to take. Sure. Um, this one's a little bit tricky. So, mission briefing is great, but it's definitely weaker and limited. Um, so, the question to me becomes a bomb or an engine. My bomb in this pack would be Vigaspore Worm. It's a common, it's a 6 4 for 6 with undergrowth. Uh, it pumps another dude and can't be blocked by more than one creature. So, it's definitely going to be killing things yeah. in combat. Um, it provides with a really hefty swing in the later game. Um, so, I really like that. I've also got Whispering Snitch, kind of as an, not necessarily an engine for Surveil, but a payoff for Surveil. It's cheap, it's a 1-3, uh, and then whenever you Surveil for the first time during each turn, it deals one damage to opponent to each opponent, and I gain a life. Uh, while that's pretty solid, I believe the better pick is the Worm. Um, 
It's a huge tempo play. It is. It's a, it's a great bomb. It's monstrous. Uh, if you could proc Whispering Snitch more than once... Wowie! Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I'd I pick that for sure. Um, I also had the option for Hammer Dropper, but Hammer Dropper to me isn't great. I feel the same way. It's but it's super small. It's a 5-2. <laughs> Mentor's great, but it's a 5-2. So, yeah, I'm with that. So I don't love it. Um, the Worm will be my pick, and I'm going to be trying to throw some little dudes in the graveyard and eat them up <laughs> on that note uh cool again thank you to grand slam and card sphere for sponsoring this episode okay. will do yep. you have anything you want to talk about before we go um man ravnik is cool yeah it is isn't man, it it's fun um i mean it's like it sits where i wanted it to sit i right? said this before it came out i wanted it to fit in between rt rtr mm -hmm. and ogr <laughs> And it does, in my opinion. I feel like it fits that that mold pretty well. Well, I mean, I'm a, I'm waiting on the uh, constructed. I'm waiting on constructed. We're post rotation, so yeah. things are going to shake out here pretty soon. I'm waiting on that. I'm also waiting on the next set to drop. Yes, that's really going to be the key thing for me. Once we have all the guilds, that is just, a very solid point. I can't wait to see Gruel. I can't. Wait. You're gonna love it. I don't know. I don't you know will. Effect. No matter what, you're going to love it. I mean, it's pretty easy. We'll just take the card <laughs> sideways. And that's all you got to do. Face. Uh, I'm yeah. excited for Azorius, as I would be. Um, I'm thinking the Simic deck, any kind Simic of... Simic would be really fun. I think I, it usually is. They're postured to be really yeah. very strong in yeah, this yeah. next standard uh, season. That's fair. But yeah, we're, we're post-rotation. We're saying goodbye to some stuff. We're going to... Yeah, no more Amonkhet, our... Kaladesh is out. Kaladesh is out. A um, lot of good stuff just rotated out, mm -hmm. honestly. A lot of the... I mean, we talked about this on... Was it the last podcast episode? Yeah, yeah. it was. The meta episode. Right. Um, so many of the heavy-hitting cards in Standard right now just left. <laughs> yeah. Scarab God, gone. Hazaret, Glorybringer, oh, gone. Oh. Like, so many powerful cards yeah. went out. We did get Glorybringer's replacement in Ixalan, though, in Rekindling we did. Phoenix. We did. That kind of took its spot. It did kind of take its spot, I agree, but um, just as a red deck entity, we don't have the same... I mean, we talked about that before. We don't have the same inevitability that we had before. Right. We, however, in looking... Me looking at lists and kind of playing with some, some test decks, mm -hmm. I think the red deck is still going to be pretty dominant. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier today. Yeah, there's a card that we'll do. we'll just talk, we'll take a quick aside here. Yeah, if let's you've do stuck it. around this long, it's a little nugget for you. I'm gonna try to chicken remember nugget. the name, but dude, I'm, I want chicken nuggets. I'm hungry. Oh, good lord! Yo, Chief Filet is still open. That's all I'm saying, baby. Dude, we can go get some oh. chicken nuggets, um, man. You want some chicken nuggets, man? I always do. <laughs> is kind this of, offensive to anybody? I feel bad. Um, I always want chicken nuggets. So oh, okay. anyway, the red deck. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah experimental frenzy card is, is sweet. nuts for this red deck runaway steamkin nuts for the red deck runaway steamkin every turn is going to get bigger potentially by two counters yeah uh and then you just get to cast stuff because you just gets you mana that's dope yeah uh, experimental frenzy and enchantment for four if you haven't heard it heard of it yet you may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. You can't play cards from your hand. And then to, you can pay for and destroy it. So what this does is make sure you draw all your lands, and then you just get to play all your spells. Yeah. Holy crap. That's yeah. pretty good. Um, this is its card advantage. This is replacing Bowman yeah. Courier in my mind. It is. It's um, like... It's interesting, too, because well, Bomat Courier was an interesting card because it came out early, early on, mm -hmm. uh, and then it left itself open to removal, whereas this almost hits at the prime perfect spot, like yep. a turn four play to let you play the rest of your deck. Because on turn four in a red deck, it's like, yeah, I'm probably going to be out of gas by that point You're probably anyway. Your hand's probably empty. Yeah, and so, four. like, this just seems like the perfect fit. Yeah. I mean, um, we still have Chain Whirler that takes a lot of strategies off the board against yeah. a red deck. Uh, against the mirror chain is dope yeah um and steamkin like i said just it adds extra value to all your cards yeah literally all your cards anyone yeah you cast, absolutely steamkin loves it eats it for breakfast um yeah yeah i think i think the red deck is was stronger than i was giving it credit for agreed um, i was in the same boat yeah this looks pretty 
It's going to be a fun standard season. That's all I'm saying. I actually talked to a guy at uh, G2K today. He was like, hey, are you a standard player? I was like, ha, funny you should ask. Um, and <laughs> Did I you just, say I'm about to be? I was like, well, <laughs> I wasn't. And then guilds came out. Um, yeah. And we've been brewing a deck, a couple decks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to tease this. We've are been you, brewing are you, a deck. Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm not going to say the card that's in it. Okay. Everybody will, I mean, it'll be fun. We're, we'll see. I'm teasing a deck that we are building right now. Yeah, we're, t- we're going to test is, it. Yeah, tonight, actually, as mm-hmm. soon as we're done with this. Uh, we feel pretty strongly about it that it will maybe not be the best deck ever. No. Uh, yeah. Let's be honest, it's going to be the best deck ever, guys. Um, so <laughs> No, it will be a lot of fun, regardless of whether it wins or not. Oh, yes. Uh, and so we are pretty excited about that. Um, along with, there are plenty of other decks that I'm excited. I mean, Soul Tide Midrange, I'm stoked about. Yep, definitely. Uh, uh, is I'm, it Spells, I think, is solid. Yep. I'm making a, a different blue-black list. There's one that's been going around that I don't think does it justice. Um like it main boards a lot of cards I wouldn't yeah but that's fair be that as it may um yes this deck that we are we are brewing it's gonna be fun you should see that later this week it's spicy it's got a little bok choy it's got a little cayenne pepper (laughs) it's got a little love it's got a deep roux that we just started making we let it simmer for a little bit Mm. we gonna feed a village baby we gonna feed a whole village delicious or we go poison everybody and we just end up getting taco bell or something done yeah i kind of think of another spice that i wanted to say in a funny voice so um on that note i'm good guys thanks for sticking around if you stuck around this long (laughs) we really appreciate it thank you again to our sponsors we are going to get out of here my name is kevin my name is will this has been it resolves